Hello and welcome to lesson 5.3 and 5.4. Today we're going to look at derivatives of various different exponential functions. So in order to do this, first off, remember that f of x belonging equaling e to the exponent x, its derivative is also the natural exponential function. Now using that idea, what we can do is if I wanted to ever take any function e to the exponent hx, then what I have to do is I have to realize that that is a composite function because the h of x is inside the e to the x function. So I need to find the derivative of e to the h of x, which is e to the h of x. Then I have to find the derivative of h of x and multiply. So multiply by a derivative of h of x. And that would be the derivative of e to the h of x. Now, if you had any other base other than e, <clears throat> the derivative of this kind of function is actually also an exponential function. And we saw that it was multiplied by some value k, as we saw in lessons 5.1 and 5.2. Well, in actual fact, that value of k actually relates to the base in some way. So it's actually b to the exponent x times the natural logarithm of that base value. And this only works, uh, you only have to use this if you're talking about a base value other than e. If you are uh, following these rules and you want to use the base e, then ln of e is just 1 and wouldn't cause any change to the expression. So let's apply these to various different equations or functions. So, I want to differentiate y equals 5 to the exponent x. Derivative of that is 5 to the exponent x times natural logarithm of 5. It's already in fully factored form, so no need to simplify any further. Derivative of, now we'll work out f of x equals 4 times e to the x. Its derivative is f prime of x is equal to 4 e to the x. No difference. Okay. Easy. Let's try g of x. g of x is equal to 2 times e to the negative x. Its derivative is 2 e to the negative x, but i got to find the derivative of the exponent, which is negative 1. Rewriting this in the 2 times the negative 1 can be negative 2 e to the negative 2. Sorry. My apologies, negative x. <clears throat> okay, last one right here. If h of x is equal to 2 times 3 to the exponent 2x, remember the 2 in front is a constant, so we leave that alone. Derivative of any exponential function is itself times the natural logarithm of the base times the derivative of the exponent, which is this. Simplifying this, 2 times 2 is 4. I'll write the ln 3 beside it. And that's multiplied by 3 to the exponent 2x. Here we go. Okay, moving on. If f of x is equal to 3 to the exponent x, then calculate f prime of x. And then use this to compare, how does the uh, graph of the derivative compare to the graph of the original function? So, well, to calculate the derivative again, derivative of any exponential function is itself an exponential function, the same one, times the natural logarithm of the base, because our exponent is just a x, derivative of the exponent is 1, multiplying this won't change anything. So, how does this, this graph here compare to this graph right here? Well, notice natural logarithm of 3 is just greater than 
Let's see, I'll use my calculator. Calculate the ln of 3. I get 1.0986. So it's greater than 1. Since it's greater than 1, that means this is a vertical stretch. of the original function. Which you may have noticed if you did any exploration with the value for three as your base for 5.1 and 5.2. Okay, so moving on. <clears throat> Let's try some more challenging derivatives. So these ones have pieces and parts that are exponential and other styles. So you'll notice this 3x squared is multiplied by e to the negative x. So I'm going to use, have to use product rule here. I'm going to have to find the derivative of 3x squared. Multiply that by e to the negative x. I'm going to have to add 3x squared. I'm going to have to find the derivative of e to the negative x. So... The root of 3x squared is 6x, still multiplied by e to the negative x. This time I leave the 3x squared alone. Derivative of e to the negative x is e to the negative x times negative 1 because of the derivative of the exponent. Now, this one I can common factor out something. I can common factor out a 3, I can common factor out an x, and I can common factor out e to the negative x. This is going to leave me with 2 from the first term and a minus x from the last term. And there we go. Okay, let's find the derivative of this function, f of x, where f of x is 5 times 2 to the exponent x, sorry, 5 to the exponent 2x, times sine of 2x. So again, I'm going to have to use product rule here. derivative of 5 to the exponent 2x first, multiply that by sine 2x, add 5 to the exponent 2x, going to find out the derivative of sine 2x. <coughs> the derivative of 5 to the exponent 2x is 5 to the 2x times ln 5, times the derivative of the exponent, which is 2. Multiply that by sine 2x. Add, now I'll leave 5 to the 2x alone. Derivative of sine 2x is cosine 2x, times the derivative of the inside, which is 2. Again, you might notice there are common pieces here. I can common factor out. So I can common factor out the uh, 2 times the 5 to the 2x from both. This leaves me with ln 5 from the first term times sine 2x and add cosine 2x in the last term. Here we are, go. Simplified. Okay, last problem. If f of x equals x to the x times e to the negative 2x, then determine the derivative, and then use this to determine the equation of the tangent when x equals 1. So first find the derivative. Again, notice that these two functions are multiplied. So I have to use product rule. turns out to be 1 times e to the negative 2x plus x times e to the negative 2x times negative 2.
common factor is e to the negative 2x, which will leave me 1 minus 2x. Okay, so there's my derivative. Part b. I want to find the equation. So that means I've got to find f prime at 1, and I also have to cal calculate f at value 1. Okay, so that's e to the negative 2 times 1, 1 minus 2 times 1. I'm going to write it as, let's see, negative e to the negative 2, and, or you can write as negative 1 over e squared. Either option is fine. f at 1 is therefore 1 times e to the negative 2 times 1. Therefore, e to the negative 2, or 1 over e squared. So now that I have that information, I just write it into the equation y equals mx plus b. So y is 1 over e squared, or e to the negative 2. m is negative 1 over e squared. x value right here is 1 plus b. Solve for b, that's 1 over e squared plus 1 over e squared, which is 2 over e squared. So therefore our equation is y equals negative 1 over e squared x plus 2 over e squared. And there's our function. And thus concludes our lesson.